Welcome back, everybody, to Gundam's Grace, presented by the Gundam Evolution New Type League. I am Evan Wonderchef Hashimoto, joined once again by James Jamerson Lee. And we just set up our two teams in the winner's finals, but it's time now to move down to the teams that have already lost once and are fighting for their lives. Yeah, Skill Issue versus Powerpuff Girls and IQ versus Tekka. Those are the two matches that will be taking place in the lower bracket quarterfinals. Of course, uh, they still have long ways to go before a rematch between either Team Sucky Vacuums or Bork, um, who one of those teams will be sent down, and I don't know who to call. I They both played immaculately, and so that's going to be a tough task when it comes down to it, but they've got to get through the low bracket first. Yeah, maybe they'll just uh, keep tying against each other until we just have to uh, give up and give them both the title because that's how it looks like they've been playing. They're that good uh, amongst the matches today, at least. But uh, unfortunately, I feel like you've cursed us with a bunch of two O's because you mentioned it at the start of the day, but it was the curse of last time, too. We're just seeing a lot of two O's. It's the truth. Uh, and we'll see if we do finally see some game threes down here in uh, the lower bracket. We've got some teams that we've seen and we've got some teams that we haven't seen quite at all. So we We've seen Tekka and Powerpuff Girls. Uh, we've seen Tekka actually a lot today, and we may see them a little bit more, but Powerpuff Girls we also did see on stream. But Skill Issue and IQ are both teams that we have not had a chance to see on the broadcast. And I did mention earlier that IQ did uh, fill out the survey. Uh, you know, I was trying to figure out a little bit more about all these teams, and they are a team where it does seem like there are some Gundam Evolution kind of uh, endemic players, but they are a set of them that come from, I believe, Battlefield. Uh, I know that uh, IQ, the player on IQ, uh, is a competitive, very competitive Battlefield player, which is something that we saw from Team Gundam Unicorn as well. They were also Battlefield players. So uh, they're coming from that. I'm excited to see how they work together as a team skill issue. I know a whole lot less about. So that's exciting in its own right. I mean, that's the nice thing about these tournaments that we literally have so many dark horses, so many teams that we don't know anything about, so they can always surprise us. Um, here in the lower bracket, anything can happen. We know that uh, across the board, regardless of um, the game and uh, the game type, right? That just the lower bracket just kind of does something where it just reinvigorates players. So we'll see if they have any surprises in store for us. Um, right now, it looks like our map bans and picks have already happened. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our teams have decided on. We got a lot of mountain R&D today. We'll see if that remains to be true. Let's go ahead and check out our map bans for this lower bracket match. And our first band coming in, well, surprise, surprise, we're actually not gonna see any mountain R&D for this game as it's the wow. first band coming in. Wow, wow, finally, somebody's like, you know what? We've had enough of this. We've had absolutely enough of this, uh, but you know, that, that's kind of cool. I, I like to see more maps, of course. I love seeing mountain R&D. Those are really exciting, chaotic matches but uh, we have seen quite a bit of it today. So I'm actually pretty excited to see that. We're also not gonna be seeing Harbor City. So this was actually Powerpuff Girls' first two maps of the day. And now both of them are banned in their second match of the broadcast, or at least of the broadcast, right? Uh, so they're gonna be playing something completely different and we are going to see Thermal Plant. Yeah, Thermal Plant as our first map and uh, it's gonna be skill issue actually deciding, well, I mean, never mind. I was gonna say they're going to attack first, but everyone attacks first. Yeah this map but our second map um when it does go to that is gonna be flak ford so kind of similar to what we had in our last match it was a just um it was a domination match uh in, into flak ford and so we'll get to see a little bit out of that and again i love seeing our flak ford matches because again it kind of shows uh it's a really good litmus test for how good our teams are on the defensive side especially on their point a defense that's where it gets tested i would say the most um and uh, we got to see how strong a defense can hold coming out from Team Bork there um, in our match just beforehand. And then, of course, we will do our final map bans if this goes to a third map. So leaving things like Underground, Command Center, Quarry, and Ministry of Defense open, we have not seen any of those maps so far today. Yeah, we actually haven't seen Ministry of Defense almost not be banned a single time. So uh, just the fact that it's even unbanned is uh, it's a little bit of a win for Ministry of Defense fans. But uh, yeah, I, I am not super surprised that we are going to see in the Flak Fort. But it's interesting to have banned out uh, Mountain R&D and then go to Thermal Plan. I'm not sure if maybe it was like the opposite teams that banned it and picked it. But that is going to be uh, we've seen it one time today, right? We've seen one Thermal Plant game and it's 
in my opinion, that's my favorite domination map, just because uh, you mentioned this earlier today. Every point plays very differently, and certain teams can be very good at particular points, or their comps can be good at very particular points, but you have to be ready for anything. You have to really show that level of flexibility. And uh, the points, yeah, they can just be their own really cool, unique, independent fights, and I really like that. Yeah, on Mountain R&D, if, if you're the better team on A or C, I mean, that means you're just the better team on the other, right? <laughs> yes. uh, and so uh, I don't think we've seen teams really be able to kind of flip that, right? Be, go toe-to-toe -to -toe on C or on A. It's either if the team ends up winning A and it flips to C, they're going to win C as well. And the big question mark, the big coin flip is when we go down to B instead. There's not that same kind of flip. But like you said, when it comes to uh, thermal plants, every single point is different. It's not mirrored. And so it does come down to just individual raw play. And I love seeing that. Uh, we got to see uh, teams try to run the Sazabi list here, and it does end up working out. We, we did get to see, I believe, uh, some teams, what? Was it this map where, was it um, um, thermal plant where teams try to run the Zaku 2 ranged? Or am I misremembering here? Uh, I think that it was. I think it was, right? Oh gosh, I don't know. It was one of the, it was definitely one of the dom domination maps. So I think yeah, I do, I do believe so. I do believe so because I don't remember them trying to flank around on Mountain R D because that's pretty clear, like right when people flank around on that. So I do think you're right that this was where the Zaku 2 ranged showed up, but we didn't see it really do that much. And I yeah. think that's why, unfortunately, it's a little bit hard to remember. It didn't manage to get off uh, as much of the uh, the flanking <laughs> ability as it can. I, I do like it on this map, though. I do got to say, you know, there's a lot of spaces where it can work pretty well. And uh, it, it, it kind of has its own unique strengths here. So... You know, not super against, well, okay, you know, not Ooh. quite Zaku 2 ranged, but uh, we are certainly going to see Zaku 2 here. Wait, that's that's melee, right? That's Zaku 2 melee, yeah, and that's yeah. not just Zaku 2 <laughs> melee, it's got the boys, the Bash brothers coming in, you got Barbados, Exia, and Zaku 2 melee. This is a huge, huge, just uh, death bully composition. I kind of wanted to see them, like, follow it up with the gun tank as well, right? <laughs> just charge in with the gun tank and then create that opening. It's kind of like a mini uh mini screaming nimbus at that point but it's gonna be a fight for the high ground now and you've got a sazabi on the other side but they've got a barbados themselves this time so it's gonna be triple melee death ball compositions coming up from either side the marsai as well but unfortunately looks like uh they lost out on one as they fall back and i think it's gonna be a one for one exchange but point b unlocks and fortunately they are gonna be forced back yeah, the, uh, the Zaku 2 melee was really far in there. It did use the invincibility, but there wasn't quite a follow-up, so it did just end up going down to a really spectacular team focus. And here we go, a very aggressive play from the Sazabi. Make sure it doesn't get picked off. It just needs one more hit against that Mars side. It's not going to find it. But again, this is a very... Oh, it found it in the end all the way around the other wall. Good call on where they were going to run back out, but eventually the Sazabi going down. Yeah, these are trades, though, and look at the point. It's 11 to 12%, so it's been going back and forth. I mean, this is uh, an extremely brawly style, and that makes sense. You have so many brawlers on one side versus the other here. The trade's going out. Once again, the point flipping. So this looks like it's just going to be a war of attrition. The next point we're going on over towards is going to be point A this time, though. Yeah, A can be actually a little bit more hard to or a little bit more difficult to like get this kind of like brawling style going on because you do have your own unique high grounds in here and the mid range like shooting suits can actually take a lot of control of this. So I'm excited to see how well they can do with this melee death ball. We see the Arbados and the Exia coming in through the side, which is really commonplace for these melee to come in through. But can they find a hit? I'll tell you who can find a hit. This Exia managing to get a good amount of damage onto the Sazabi and zip around and just live forever, almost forever as Xeas do. Yeah, and they're trading once again, but the reses, it will not go through. They get the finishes as well as uh, now they charge on forward. Uh, you can see that Xia is going to be coming back to the point a little bit late, but his team is there still grouped up as a full three man playing off that unicorn, playing around the extra healing from that armor and right now as you do have the unicorn ultimate being used. The funnels is going to be traded back and forth, actually. No one finding a pick quite yet, but they are grouped up here on the right hand side and Xeros oh. will be able to find one. Batty finds one more for his squad. And now the Powerpuff Girls, they will maintain presence on point A. They are taking the clear lead now with almost 30 points to their name. That was the perfect 
Gundam Unicorn G Maneuver. That was exactly the spot you want to use it. I mentioned it before, there can be some really tough spots to use it on this map, but A, you can really get people all trying to funnel in through that one particular door, and it was just followed up so impressively by the rest of the team. That was a great, great play. One of the best today, I think. But that is a, like you said, a huge lead, and they're going to just continue to hold on to this until we see the switch to B, where they are going to try to get that early positioning. Yeah, and on point B, we saw that the Brawlers were able to really create chaos in this one, uh, not allowing the high ground control for uh, Pale Riders at any point whatsoever. But if they can find these staggers, that would be huge. Pro Genji ends up finding one himself, but we'll see. He might go down now, down to 163 HP, charging after and is able to take him out. What a huge pickup for themselves, as uh, now it, the point will unlock. Yeah, they're on position, but this is a really tough uh, map to be on position for B for. Like, you have to have somebody down there. Luckily, they do have the Sazabi, but oh, look at this. Jumping up the side, not quite able to get anything for that Barbados. Just barely outmaneuvering it. That can be a really short range, and the XE is going to come down and get, I believe, another pick. And this is actually going to be absolutely huge on the side of Powerpuff Girls. Or wait, was this Skillshoe? No, this is Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, yeah, Powerpuff Girls snagging it back. I got confused for one quick moment. And if they can hold this one down, this could be the finish. Um, but if it's swapped, we will be going over to point A for the next one. We'll see, though. The defensive setup coming out from the Dom right now. He's got the Mara side to back him up just in case he needs the help in a duel. Backing away, never mind. They've already gone two knocks for themselves. And really, that should just be it. 99.9% .9 as extra time ticks down. The first round about to go the other way, and that will be the Powerpuff Girls taking the first half of this map. Yeah, great. Uh, I mean, it was a really nice, like, hold i guess on a for the other side for skill issue but uh aside from that it just it just seemed like they had a little bit of uh, an idea of how they wanted to play a and b it was just a lot more confident i think from the side of powerpuff girls and a lot of it is of course again that team comp i think this team comp uh this triple melee works pretty freaking well on this map but not on B, if they can, the enemy team can get the correct positioning. And we saw that really well from, for example, we saw uh, Davester on the Barbados that was trying to jump up and like go up the ramps and catch people. But there was so much space for all of Powerpuff Girls to move backwards that they just weren't able to quite get a pick. But we never saw this go to C, which is where I think, for example, Barbados is one of the best it's one of the Barbados best spots right you can jump up into a bunch of point blank immediate spots that you can't hear him from uh, a you know you can get some nice spots around corners but the fact that it was on B so much I think it was really a, a boon for Powerpuff Girls so we'll see where this one goes it's immediately starting on C so we can already see a new point yeah I mean and on B you have to realize that there's so many med packs around there that you can really play around so it's harder and harder for the brawlers to just go for that chase down uh, because as you're retreating away from the brawlers, you're healing as well. Two immediately on the high ground, and of course you can back away even further. But now, here comes point C. Uh, they do have a Sazabi for this time around to try and play around that. As you can see, the Rage Armor has been utilized. They've got one isolated on the left-hand side. It's actually going to be two, but that Mega Health Pack keep that Dom alive, but not for long. Really good rushdown coming out from our skill issue squad as uh, the brawlers do end up finding value for themselves, and they will unlock point C and secure it for them. I got to say, I love the style of skill issue. I'm a really big fan. You know, win or lose, I, I want to watch more of their matches. They're, they're like the ultimate aggro death ball team. And, and we haven't had a chance to see that as much on these broadcasts. I am loving it right now, though. It's working out for them. You know, they're holding on to this spot very, very well. And oh, look at that. They just completely just surrounded the other side, but be their shield actually going to get a couple picks here. So that's looking pretty good. There's a, definitely a chance for... Uh, or maybe like a repick here? Yeah, it's gone back and forth, but the important part is that they are maintaining presence here. The Sazabi mm -hmm. is holding it down. They swap out so we can go and pick up the Mega Health back and get back on to points. And I would say for the other side, for Powerpuff Girls, this is more about trying to maybe catch them on the rotation. You can see now the quick movement coming out from Sazabi, realizing, hey, there's 10 uh, seconds left. We need to get up here. But that is why they did not even try to contest for a little bit on point C at all whatsoever. It was point B that we mentioned uh, during the half that you know, the other side, that Powerpuff Girls were really able to dominate. They've already gotten two picks, but they're trading back. Be their shield, picking up two. 
Yeah, this, oh, nice, great angle around this is zombie. That's going to be enough. Of course, you, you do risk, of course, you do that self damage. And unfortunately, wasn't able to close it out. You do all that damage, you're not quite able to close it out. That's a zombie is going to get the, uh, I'm sorry, not the zombie. The Barbados is going to get the high ground there. That's a really nice spot for it to have. If anybody comes in through that door, they can just immediately get jumped on. And again, we're seeing some really strong control on the side of skill issue here. It's a very different game than we saw before. I think we really need to see Powerpuff Girls grab this back. Now we do have the RX-782 ultimate being used, but they run past it. Never mind. Kaiser runs into it and will go down. And so that'll be another defensive hold coming out from skill issue. Regardless of the heroics that might come out here, even though we've got the Trans Am available, he does not have his team. Want to hold on to that one as he will ultimately fall. So, so far, no ticks picked up, no percentage picked up from Powerpuff Girls. It's been all skill issue here in the second round, looking to send us to a third round on thermal plants 96 hp is that rx 72 and he does get chased down killer umbrellas will fall and he gets finished off now it's going to be the 6v5 advantage for the powerpuff girls yeah but this is an awkward timing right nine seconds left you're like yay we got seven seconds at this point but realistically like it's not quite enough to bring you back you've got to move over to c and we already seen how strong c can be for skill issues they played that one so well and now it's moving back and forth just between c and b which is what they want to see right that's exactly what they want to see but uh we'll see who gets in position first we're seeing a lot of damage here on the bottom we're going to see the rx78 going down we see two players actually holding the bottom angle which uh can be tough if you don't have any way to get back up Screaming Nimbus utilized Ooh. by Casino here. He does pick up those two that you were talking about that were trying to play lower and uh, that put them in uh, basically one shot range of this Dom. And he's still trying to find a little bit more, but the Mega Health Pack is going to get picked up by that Barbados. You got to be careful. And he does back away. And that's going to be uh, the Powerpuff Girls actually gaining position here on C, but they have to scrap tooth and nail. They have to get full percentage here and then get the full percentage basically when we swap back on over to point B. But you can see now pushing forward, immediately onto the choke, not. Uh, trying to cut down on the space that they're playing around, but you can see now that whirling death coming in from Bone Kel. He picks up one. The G maneuver is just proving to be <laughs> too strong on this brawler composition. Oh, yeah, we have not seen a good Zakutu melee ult in a while, but it is always going to be disgusting when it works. And that was, oh, yeah, the gun tank, let's go! Let's go! Alan <laughs> fully invincible through the Exia with the Trans Am on. That was an unbelievably fashionable play, but there's a really good chance actually here for a retake aside from all of that. Maybe getting a little bit too cocky there, playing with your food a little bit too much. I still respect it, but this is really what you want to see. It was almost every G maneuver used on the Powerpuff Girls side though for that. The Marasai ultimate along with, I honestly, I feel like every single one. It was hard to tell because we couldn't see on their end which G maneuvers they had available, but it looked like almost every single one was used just to keep this in overtime now. But it comes down to one final fight. If they lose one fight, it is going to be over for them as uh, they are trying to chase down one. The point has been flipped. They need to get right back onto the point. And oh no, things are looking bad. They have to fight on the point up against the brawlers. And that is where they excel right now as Kaiser does find one. But Focus and Batty has gone down. And it looks like Powerpuff Girls might be going down. They might go to round number three. They've got a little bit of fight left in them. Casino is still alive along with their exit, but overtime is going to tick away soon. Yeah, right. As you said, both of them go down and that is going to be uh, really exactly how you want that to play out as far as how uh, many times you get C for skill issue. And, you know, one thing that actually just confused me a minute ago, I just realized uh, Be Their Shield is on skill issue, wasn't in their original roster uh, signed up uh, for the tournament, but I think there was a last minute switch. Be Their Shield, I think, was the Sazabi player that was on Bozo's last tournament so that's a pretty big oh and and uh pro genji's on that team as well so there's a few t players that i know were in other teams that are on skill difference so i wonder or sorry skill issue so i wonder if they are kind of like a, a mix of some other teams that have maybe not been playing together i'm really loving how they're playing and like i said their style's so fun to watch and i mean the gun tank woo taunt or spray i'm all about it we had an entire tournament, right, of basically just one composition. So I love that we do get to delve a little bit further into um, 
into different compositions, into having this brawler style that, I mean, I imagine that all of us are used to when it comes to just playing casual or ranked matches. This is a bit more akin to what we're used to seeing um, when we're in that setting. And so I'm glad to see that we get to see the clashing styles between the two right now. The swap off, no Sazabi coming in uh, this time around. I imagine four Powerpuff girls that are going to stick with the Mara side. They've got the, um, they've got the Dom along with that pale rider and it's going to be this uh point a push coming out trying to go for the left to have that make a control but they funnel themselves oh. in dave steer ends up picking up two but powerpuff girls still have some fight left and then they're trading back batty has gone down evictus is still alive and he's got the health pack to play off of Wow, yeah, the Barbados two for one. That's a beautiful thing to see. But uh, yeah, this is staying a pretty even fight here on this point. It looks like it's just going to open up and get picked up pretty quickly on the side of, I believe that is Powerpuff Girls. But that was uh, that was a really tough spot to put yourself in, especially getting rid of, I mean, like, yeah, just two units that are trying to push for that health pack too. And now as uh, it is ticking on up, that's going to be a one-for-one -one exchange. Davester has fallen once again on that Barbados, not quite finding the opening here. They lose out on two more. Zexia, uh, he's just delaying. He really does have to just kind of reset himself because I don't think there's going to be a chance to be able to win this one out. He does end up picking a pack, but he hasn't found a pick, which is the most important part. And he's just getting chased down. And so he's just delaying at this point here. But um at least now you're gonna be fighting for point c so maybe you start positioning for that instead yeah and it does look like you can see all the little silhouettes running over to c already uh fully agreed right there but back to c again and uh, again skill issue has been playing this particular site very 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 well uh, so we'll see if they get a chance to. There is a really strong early positioning from Powerpuff Girls. We see Casino on the point, and we see, ooh, an amazing first focus here. We're going to take down the Barbados before it has a chance to do anything walking in. That's why we usually see it jumping up. Uh, but the RX-78, probably not going to have a chance to live here. Best of luck, but maybe needed to hit a Hyper Hammer out of that to try to get the kill itself. And so we're just seeing some uh, pretty tough picks here. No chance to really push. They're just getting staggered. Yeah, and they're finding more and more picks there. And so that's going to be an easy point C take for them. And they are accruing a percentage almost tying up now to 29 to 29. But I kind of want to see what G maneuvers they have on the other side. Hades here, not the strongest one. The Ashmar Punch will definitely help them out. It's going to be a transom along with the whirling large heat axe. But they're going to go ahead and utilize that RX-72 ultimate. Did it get cleared out instantly? It did Ooh. actually pick up one. And so they're not over committing on the G maneuvers. Never mind, they do use that large heat axe there. Davester finds one as well onto Kaiser. They're fighting back, but now they need to try and take point 34% for themselves. And now the Trans Am runs out and they're about to tie things back once again. Yeah, that was a lot of, I think, cleanup off of the Zaku 2 melee. Uh, G maneuver, but it just wasn't that many points. I mean, they are going to essentially steal back the lead here, but you know, they only got about 15 seconds for using all of those G maneuvers. And here we go. We're going to see once again, just a huge brawl up here. But the fact that we do see a pretty strong hold on top from Powerpuff Girls is going to be huge. That's how they've held B before. And now the Barbados giving chase. Skill issue fighting one. That's going to be Dave, sir. Can he find a little bit more? He gets two knocks, but he doesn't get the finishes. So they will be able to res up and get them right back into the fight. It's a really good attempt, unfortunately. Just not quite enough. And Genji going down along with Evictus. Things are not looking good so far here for skill issue on this point. It's going to be Powerpuff Girls picking that one up. Now it's all about trying to defend this one, but they are staggering once again. Back onto the point, the Screaming Nimbus has been used, and Davester will get cleaned up. But that is a Screaming Nimbus down, and honestly, you kind of wanted to hold on to that for a little bit longer. Yeah, it's just going to like allow them to delay a little bit longer before there's another push here on B. We are going to A next. There's not going to be a chance that anybody finishes here on B. So uh, you might want to, you know, hold on. Maybe maybe there's just confidence that they'll get it back before the end of the game and they get like one final set of G maneuvers. But here we go. We're going to see the push up from the Zaka 2 melee. It did absorb a lot with invincibility. It didn't go into rage, but wow, just barely escaping on the Gundam Unicorn. Finally getting caught down. Will it get finished? No, I think we're going to see the revive and that is huge i mean that was great aggression and it did push a lot of people off of the points so there's going to be a little bit more points on the side of skill issue but not quite enough to tie things up it will a lot come down to this point a hold yeah and i think this is going to be the final fight uh 22 seconds before the point unlocks we're down to our last minute pro genji ends up getting picked that's huge now 
And again, that's such it comes at such a bad time. You want to be grouped for this. You want to be uh, ready to fight as soon as that point unlocks. But now they're not really going to have that opportunity. We do have, looks like three members grouped up here on the left-hand side. Try to push and play off of that mega health pack. But as they charge forward, the axe doesn't quite connect. That's the sea snare coming in. And they're able to charge in with that follow-up. Great utilization of that Marasite ult into that funnel. And now it's coming down to the final 10%. Yeah, that Mara side G maneuver can be so, so strong using the correct situations. And against a full team of melee, I'd say it's pretty much the perfect exact situation. We are going to see the Hyper Hammer just slightly miss. There's still a lot of damage potential on board here. 223 HP left. Maybe you're going to need to back up. No, no fear in the world. Trying to clear out this Ashmore. Can't get the hit. No, hit it. Oh my gosh. Somehow the Ashmore is still up. It's going to fly away. It's going to get to safety. And they're not even able to get onto the point. Overtime ticks away, and I believe it's going to be Powerpuff Girls taking this 2-1 to one on our first map. But what a map we had here um, on, yeah, on Thermal Plant. I, I, I was expecting this one to be a lot more even than the matches that we saw so far, but what a way for it to go. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was it was relatively even, right? There was a back and forth for sure. Uh, it did seem like like we tend to see, I think, on domination. We see it obviously a lot more on a mountain R and D. But whoever's winning has such a good position for whatever happens next. And we do see it less on here, but it did seem to be similar ish as far as one team would get the lead and then they would just move and they'd hold the next point and then move and they hold the next point. And a lot of that was there was so much aggression in this map that we saw a lot of staggering, I think. But this is going to be a very, very different game for the second map of the set. And, uh, you know, I mentioned a bunch of times, I love watching Skill Issue, how they're playing that map with the full melee, with the full death ball. But I don't know if it's going to be uh, even close to as successful of a strategy going into Flak Fort. Yeah, I mean, it kind of is the nature of the beast, right? When you're trying to play for those flanks, you are going to leave yourself vulnerable to getting caught out and then staggered. And um it happened to them more often than not unfortunately so um we'll see if they can try and clean that one up black forts i don't know it's so hard to tell how that composition will play out up against um teams that are holding defensively with the sazabi with the pale rider on point a but there's a huge opportunity if that exia can get that first flank pull them apart kind of uh distract the defenses create an opening for um the barbados to get in it could be huge i don't know how well um the Zaka 2 melee plays into that kind of defense, but I am definitely here for it to see if that can su uh, succeed. Yeah, it's uh, it, it'll be really interesting. Again, uh, it, it's clear to me now that skill issue for sure has a few different players from different teams, and they're probably still shifting around some players a lot. So, you know, as time goes on, we're going to see a lot of that. We're seeing that from Team Saki Vacuums, which is completely comprised of three different teams uh, that have already been really strong. But this one containing, uh, again, you know, this this is, uh, you know, the, their, their Sazui player is the winning Sazui player from the previous event from Halloween Havoc. So it just goes to show you, like, there's a lot of really strong talent out there that's currently moving around in teams. But it's great to see it. And I'm sure there's a lot of flexibility on the team. I would be surprised if they were, like, actual one tricks. Uh, and another fun thing to note, by the way, uh, every single team, all four of our losers bracket teams, only lost to the two teams that are in winners still. Every single one. It's just the path of them, them all losing to those two teams. That's pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, it was very similar, I would say, um, to what happened uh, during Halloween Havoc. We got to get in a great rematch, essentially, uh, when it came to our Winner's Grand Finals. And honestly, that's what I love uh, when it comes to double uh, elimination style, is that we do get these narratives that kind of naturally just build itself up, the rematch, uh, to see if they um, can um, rise through the level of their competitors. And we do see that happening quite often. So I'm really excited right now to see, um, again, uh, the evolution of our teams right now, Powerpuff Girls, um, they are getting challenged right now from, by skill issue, but both sides are really answering in kind. Yeah, we've we've got, I mean, just as time's going on, we're just seeing more and more extremely solid teams, and I love to see it. Uh, so many different teams that we're starting to get used to, so many different players we're starting to get used to, and now, you know, teams that we're not used to that are also still just showing up. I mean, there's so many teams that we uh, haven't seen that did show up for Halloween Havoc, and I do got to say, just as a side note, huge shout outs to everybody who entered this week, uh, I mean, or this month. I know that, you know, we're right before the big patch, and it's right after the holidays, so huge shout out to 
so many people showing up for this tournament. That's so cool to see the dedication of all of these teams and all of these players in the scene in general. But uh, because of that, I'm sure, you know, we, we're not seeing, for example, teams like Team Gundam Unicorn. We're not seeing, uh, I mean, full teams available even for Bozos and for uh, Inarizaki. We're not seeing, uh, there's a few more that I can't think of off the top of my head. I mean, I know uh, Koi Boys, they switched their team name, uh, but there's a few more out there that we, you know, we, we didn't quite see come back, which is understandable. Of course, not everybody's going to be able to coordinate every single time, but seeing so many new teams, so many uh, old teams come back, all of it together, it's just really great to see. And the meta is just going to keep on, the, the, like the team meta is going to keep on evolving. So I, I love to see it. And we've got four pretty equal teams, I think, in losers brackets right now. Yeah, and if you guys want to support as well, make sure you check out the Match Arena page. I mean, as long if you can access the bracket page, then you can access the Match Arena page, of course. And there are plenty of ways that you can actually contribute without actually having to donate yourself. Um, just a lot of basically quests on the sidelines that you can do, downloading the app or um, following uh, certain Twitter accounts, stuff like that. that. Those are small ways that you can help that will actually monetarily help the teams as well, contributing uh, to the prize pool. So go ahead and check out the Match Arena page there as we are getting set up for the next map. Like we said, it's going over to Flak Forts for map number two. Powerpuff Girls up right now, one to zero, but it was an extremely close match there on Thermal Plant. Yeah, down to uh, about a 50% difference overall in the final, maybe less than that, even on the final round. Uh, but now going into this, so we, we've, of course, we have experience watching Powerpuff Girls, and we know for a fact that they are going to uh, stick with most of their guns. The big difference that we saw on that previous map was the Marasai. Uh, we know that actually one of my favorite things about Powerpuff Girls as a team is that they're really flexible. They, uh, they have the ability to play the Dom when they need to. They have the ability to switch off the Dom. Um, they have the ability to bring out the GM sniper. They have the ability to bring out the turn A. They have the ability to bring out the Marasai. They have, you know what I'm saying? Like they just have so many different flex picks while still retaining their same core. And I think that's a really valuable strategy for a team, which is why I like watching them so much. But uh, I expect that we're probably not going to see the Marasai. That was more of like an inside close up pick. Uh, maybe it's just a counter to the melees, but we'll see if that's even relevant in this next match. Uh, but Big, big question mark for me still. Are we going to see the death ball again? I want to see it. I want to see the death ball every single game. Just show it to me. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's the nice thing about like trying to play um, Barbados and Exia, right? Um, in terms of melees, uh, they do have that verticality. And when it comes to Flak Fort on point B in particular, it, there's great utilization of that vertical mo uh, mobility um, that you can find an easy flank or disengage out of fights if you need to. And so oh. I would love to see that. And it looks like they are hovering <laughs> around with it. So we've got the Zaku 2 melee. We've got the RX-78-2, um, Barbados, and the Exia coming in for them. So it's going to be complete death ball right now coming out from skill issue on the offensive side. For Powerpuff Girls, though, I think they're just going to play this one standard. We're going to see uh, the Pale Rider um, along with the Exia. But the Marasai is going to be uh, continued to held... Uh, to be coming in for them instead of the Sazabi. So I like that. Sazabi, you know, just kind of, it's fodder uh, for a brawler composition, but the Marasai has that opportunity to get one pick, maybe build up the ultimate and then completely shut down uh, a push with its one ultimate. You know what I'd like to do, actually, since they're a new team, I would love if we could get a listen in on a skill issue for this first push, uh, just so that we can kind of get a, a chance to see like how they're communicating and which players are the ones that are talking, if we can even tell. So if we get a listen in on skill issue here, that would be sick. Okay. All right, Bones will cut through as the tank. Go ahead. Got There's it. A couple I'm people sort of, I'm sort of use my survive as like a uh, yeah. distraction. Thank you. Hello. Oh Push shit! Yep, I'm up here. Nice. Hey yo, hey yo, Dom's low. Dom's down. Don't let them yeah. revive Dom. Do not let them revive get Dom. Get three on site. Nice. Get three on site. Get three on site. Come back, bro. I got him up. I got him up. I'm low. low. I got him down again. Girl, back. Axios diving. Our side's low up top. Holy shit, Dave! That fucking slam that you did. I know. I'm telling you. Got him you, good. Dude. Nice. I'm getting for Axia. He's dead. Nice. We pushed. Okay, that worked. We got to listen to the entire first full point of A. That's how fast they took it. But uh, I am for sure liking their comms. Yeah, uh, they wanted the tank to go in, but you heard that last call. Hey, I can try and use my armor, super armor here. 
to try and survive and distract him. And it actually did. Uh, he took maybe 400, 500 damage before he got into it. But he distracted long enough for them to try and go for that high ground push now. But as you can see, as they try to approach for the next fight, things not going quite as well. Everything can't just be a snowball for them. It's a nice <laughs> green group now coming out from Powerpuff Girls to try and play off of this choke. But this is where you run into a little bit of trouble when you're playing up against... Uh, a Barbados composition. I, these walls can really catch you off guard when the Barbados jumps on over. So you have to be ready to dash away from that one. They've already picked up one and they're doing a great job of just falling back but dishing out damage at the same time. Yeah, we're going to see three players on the side of skill issue go down. Four players. This is going to have to for sure be a complete regroup. It uh, doesn't look like they're going to be pushing too much further forward on defense. They're just holding this little angle. This is, you know, if the Barbados, of course, can get to this wall and jump over, it can be very nasty as we're going to see this positioning right here. We might see the attempt once the rest of the team gets by, but if it can't get to the wall, then it gets to kind of be tough. But here we go. Here's the opportunity. I want to see the slams. Yeah, the Ashmore, it looks like the... Uh... The, the the smoke, excuse me, the uh, Thermite was already used now as he's trying to chase down one, does not connect, but there it is, the sword coming down to take out the Pale Rider, but it's a two for one exchange and they're losing out on even more. The Gundam Unicorn Ultimate on the other side, proving invaluable for them, but they do try to answer in kind of uh, with the Gundam um, Unicorn G maneuver themselves. Kaiser has fallen on that Mars side, but it's still a war of attrition. And ultimately this then does end up benefiting the defense as they have the faster run back and it looks like they will be able to hold it down. Yeah, and oh, that melt from behind. But, you know, honestly, like, it's just it's a weird stagger from both sides right now. This is, like, not an entire push, but we are seeing the uh, the capture be pushed up just slightly and slightly and slightly more and more on the offense. Uh, it looks like they're finally going to get fully wiped. There's one more person on the point who is probably just going to try to stay out of trouble. Maybe two people over there, actually, but they're kind of up at the high ground. So they did manage to get a full tick. It looks like the rest of it probably isn't going to mean all that much, but it's a nice push. Now let's see what happens when both teams actually kind of re-coordinate. Yeah, they've got the funnels along with the uh, large heat axe for the uh, Zaku 2 melee, along with the RX-78-2 um, G maneuver here. And honestly, that covers the entire point. They can try and cut this one off and bisect the point themselves. Looks like they will go ahead and move together as that full three man. The funnels will go out for that Zazabi, and he needs a little bit more clearance here. Takes to the skies with that axe, and you can see now the scan's coming out, but Casino's going to be able to clear out one with that screaming Nimbus. That's three going down, and only one traded. Ultimately, beautiful defense coming out from the Powerpuff Girls side, just shutting that one down. Yeah, I think when you play a death ball team like this, you have to make the assumption, wow, full team kill. You have to make the assumption that if there's a screaming Nimbus, it's going to be used. You're not going to be able to get the position that you want, and you might just need to take the wipe and then just push forward again. Because, I mean, a full melee team basically against screaming Nimbus, that is just its ultimate enemy. There's not a lot that you can do about it. You can't even just like get pot shots off while it's happening. But here we go. Again, a super fast, aggressive push. We've got oh, actually a lot of picks very quickly off the bat. There they're just like never taking their foot off the gas pedal, but uh, they, they're just such good defense on the side of Powerpuff Girls from this angle. You can see the difference between this site and site A as far as getting more range to be able to pick off all these melee units. Oh, and they're about to get some staggers here as well. Two units caught out on that mega health pack. There it is. They're going to go down along with that Zazabi. Find a third unless this Zaku melee is able to take out subject, but... No, they're uh, not even going to be able to secure that thirst. And so it's going to be a full regroup. Now we're down to two and a half, <laughs> excuse me, two, three minutes left here. As the Barbados does go in, get that kill onto one. Is it going to be enough? Not quite. The RX-72 gets the Dom, but it's again, going to be another stagger. And right now, at some point, you need to call it. You need to call it on these fights. You can't keep going and throw uh, units into these fights, especially when you're staggering and bleeding time. That's going to be another 30 seconds wasted, essentially. Yeah, but here we go. We've got another strong push. We're going to use the Trans Am, and that should be able to get the pick right here. Yeah, two people down, but there's just so much damage on the other side as well. All right, we are going to see the Pale Rider get picked Ooh. off, and now the Unicorn. This is looking like a really good push. We're already at three ticks. They need to get somebody back on point. They still have two of the G-Miners available, including the Zaku 2 melee. That might be enough to actually just take this final point if that Zaku 2 melee can get on point, use that G-Maneuver, but I don't know if it can before the rest of the team might go down. Down. And it looks like they're just going to call it here. They're not going to utilize that Zaku 2 melee um, G maneuver at this uh, juncture. If they can just force them off the high ground, that's going to be important here. You can see uh, now 
that for the Powerpuff Girls side, they are putting a lot of importance on maintaining this choke here. Again, it's going to come down to Barbados, maybe creating the first opening with that sword. If you can get onto one of the squishier targets, getting that instant finish, but a pick off on to the Sazabi and now onto that melee Zaku. That is huge for them. They might get punished for this, but it looks like they've got the Sea Snake ready to try and shut things down. Uh, that's going to be Batty going down, but he will get fit, uh, Rez back on up for his squad. Now we're down to a minute, 25 seconds remaining here. They still need to get one final tick here on point B. Oh, yeah, and that's tough. We do see the Screaming Nimbus up on the side of Powerpuff Girls. That's going to be Casino with that, and that is going to be make it just so hard to stay on point as a full team of melee. I don't know what the interaction is going to be between that and some of the other G maneuvers, but it's definitely going to be a big G maneuver battle. This is probably going to be the last push with how long this run back is, so this needs to happen right now for skill issue. Oh, activates the G maneuver is going to take down two suits with it maybe even three altogether if that was one of an assist but we still do see Casino up sitting there on the high ground we've seen the Ashmar up as well this is a huge ball for both teams with so many going down yeah and now it looks like they might just be able to secure it but as the defense comes on back they force them actually out gonna be the high ground once again casino and Kaiser on the low with subject that pale rider trying to dish out some damage now it looks like things are looking extremely dire for skill issue. They might not be able to finish out this map. And they've only got the 1G maneuver. They might be able to get the Trans M along with that Gundam Unicorn Ultimate up. And those could be the tools they need to break things open. It's a one for one exchange. Dave Star has gone down. Now skill issue does get Bone Kill back on up. But he's not finding the openings quite yet. Killer Umbrella has fallen as he does trade for one bone kel is there getting that rage armor up now the zaku 2 melee this is where he succeeds in the clutch positions but he has fallen unfortunately and the defense are coming back in force gonna shut down skill issue who only secure three ticks on point b almost getting the full thing but not quite that was a really great hold uh i mean you know you you, you can't be super unhappy obviously you want to take the point but getting three ticks on point two on a map like this where you know we've seen now teams completely hold on a or completely hold on b so it's possible it's very very much possible to just get the win straight away here or at least try to force a tie uh but the question is, how well will this melee team work on defense? I'd have to expect that, honestly, this is going to be a really terrifying team to fight on point A. Getting that first point might be the biggest challenge for Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, uh, the important part is, honestly, like, if they find an initial pick on the defense, they can run them down. That's what the composition is so good mm -hmm. at, right? Finding that first pick and then picking apart the rest of the team. They snowball so hard when it comes to that. Um, and so it's just going to come down to Powerpuff Girls being very... Um, uh, just really on point about not getting staggered. We were seeing that kind of issue coming out from skill issue. Uh, when it came to point B, there was a lot of staggering, a lot of time wasted because of it. They try to kind of throw G maneuvers at lost fights. And honestly, I think that's where they got punished the most. And that's why they really weren't able to finish out. Even though they were able to get 88.1%, I feel like they should have been able to finish things out there. Right now, though, it's all about coming down to this defense. And we have seen teams being able to hold down on point A. Yeah, uh, just back to the, the previous point about them pushing point B. Uh, one of the greatest strengths that we've seen from Powerpuff Girls in all of our games that we've seen from them, they are really, really good at G maneuver management. They do not pop all their G maneuvers at once. They save them for exactly when they need them, and they so they have enough for further pushes, especially on defense. So you love to see it, but whoa, this is... What is this? This is a really fast push through the bottom here with the uh, the Dom. So we're going to see the Dom pushing forward faster than anybody else. OK, yeah, it looked like maybe that was just like a like a blitz to kind of sneak up on them, but did wait for everybody else. Just showing off that sick, beautiful movement. Yeah, you can see skill issue. Uh, they're going to maintain the Sasabi on the high ground right now. They've already lost out one bone Kel going down. There's a second one falling. They do trade back at the very least. Marasai and Dom have fallen, but the Sazabi, the tank going down. Not what you really want to see. XE in the back line will fall. Now it looks like Powerpuff Girls should be able to get onto the point fairly shortly here. Get the res as well. And uh, that's going to be point A falling really quick. Yeah, I guess I was not quite right about that. I, I did think that was going to be a little bit scarier than it ended up being, but they just uh, didn't have the ability to control all the high grounds that you want to control in A, I guess. And that's how we usually see either the offense or the defense win within that area. You know, when the offense goes up the ramp, they take that little like side platform, then it is their real like their real powerhouse spot. 
and uh, it just looks like that's kind of what they did. So now we're going to see how the defense works on this even more wide open area. I can't imagine this will be easy either. Yeah, they do have the RX-78 Sue on the left side watching that push, but here comes Exia now right into the back line straight on top of the Sazabi. But it's going to be the Gundam Unicorn that's the first one to fall. Two quick pickups, though, coming out from our melee units. Torvados finds one along with that Zaku 2 melee, and that's going to send them packing as a skill issue. We'll hold on for now. One last pick off onto Zeros. He's going to stagger them just a little bit longer, and they need to bleed as much time as possible because... Uh, for the other side, they got six minutes to work with. Yeah, that's a lot of time. It's a lot of time for them to just sit there and just build up G maneuvers as well. That's one of the biggest uh, advantages of, oh, just jumping over the wall. That's what you were talking about. And uh, yeah, you cannot hold that other side of the wall like that safely against this Barbados. I love the gun tank. That's a perfect little size for that. But all right, we're going to see two people now go down just uh, on the side of, um, I'm sorry, of Powerpuff Girls. So not quite able to make the push, but they're actually trading quite well one for one here. Yeah, the Ashmark is able to go in, and now the combo missed by Daveser gets punished. And that's going to be two members down. They just need to stabilize and then start making their push. They've got the 6v4, and here is the Gundam Unicorn. They do end up losing out on Casino, and it does seem like he was completely finished off as well. But winning that 1v1 duel up against the RX-78-2 is going to be Gundam Unicorn. Now, they still have the man advantage as they try and maintain control of this high ground here. So we go ahead and swap on off. Um, yeah, it looks like we do have some G maneuvers being utilized, and here's the high ground push. Now they've got three members up here. Exia now down on the low, facing off up against that Zaku 2 melee who has already used his super armor, and they are cleaning up. Batty getting rest into this one. This is going to be a huge push coming out from the Powerpuff Girls, securing oh. one tick already. Now chasing after these last kills to get a little bit more streaming Nimbus to get them right back onto the point as well. Barbados is back, but for how long as that Exia and the Barbados get shut down? Oh my gosh, this is looking all so good. Nine player kill streak, team kill. Will anybody be back up in time? It's looking like there's a chance for one person to at least touch the points. It's not going to be easy and that that they're not going to even have a chance. That is going to be a clean, clean push here for Powerpuff Girls as they're going to close out that map and the set very cleanly. It's looking a lot better for them on this map than it did in the first game, but I guess that's just the nature of the teams, and we're going to see Powerpuff Girls moving forward in the loser's bracket. I'm glad we got to see the brawler composition, but we do get to see some of the weaknesses that come with it. When you're not running um, a Pale Rider in kind, right? You don't have the same kind of corner press here. Uh, you don't have the range pressure, really, even though if you are trying to run, uh, what was it? Um, I believe their longest range was um, the Gundam, the RX-78 too, right? Mm hmm he doesn't have that consistent fire rate and his reload time is so long even though he got what the one extra bullet with the last uh patch it's not enough to apply that pressure when you're trying to peak corners you don't have the same corner peaks um that we saw coming out from our powerpuff girls side powerpuff girls were able to get an errant pick onto one member i believe just by uh, being able to spam <laughs> corners and you can see why it's so important to have someone that or have a unit that's so consistent like the pale rider actually in your composition yeah, and one thing that I was uh, mentioning before we saw a super sick uh, like sword slam from the Barbados was that one of the biggest advantages when you get to that kind of further range point where they're pushing up to B is the fact that the ranged team, the more ranged team, can build up a lot more free G maneuver by just firing some shots, especially when you have a lot of time to kind of freely do so, which they did. Uh, they have a lot of time just, you know, like, oh, we'll just fire off shots, we'll wait till we get G maneuvers, and then we can just coordinate them all at once. And the, your team, you're going to have to wait for us to get close if you want to build any sort of G maneuver meter and uh, that did come into play a whole lot but uh, a really strong showing from our new team skill issue I'm really glad to see them I'm glad to see some of the players that we had a chance to see on some other teams joining this and I really really enjoyed watching their play style it was very much hold forward the entire time but they're going to be moving out of the tournament now as we see Powerpuff Girls moving forward to take on another team in our next match that we have not seen which is going to be Team IQ but before we get to them we are going to be taking one final break before we get to our final match of the day so don't go anywhere because we are going to close out who our day two teams will be right after this